ZNS Community Page now has its own home on Channel 230. Be sure to tune into this channel to see informative notices, funeral announcements, birthday greetings, and much, much more. So watch the ZNS Community Channel today on Cable 230. This week on Journey TV, celebrate the journey of love with world-renowned transformational coach Lisa Nichols and veteran sports reporter Marcellus Hall. Hear their inspiring story of overcoming past failures to find and secure a beautiful forever love. Catch this life-changing story this Thursday at 8 p.m. right here on ZNS. Journey TV, we share life's truths. As an artist, I travel all over the world and I find inspiration all around me. In the people, and especially the environment. I love the Bahamas with all its natural beauty. From Abaco in the north to Inagua in the south and all the wonderful and colorful islands in between. And we must all do our part to keep the Bahamas healthy and clean, now and for the future generations. That's why I want you to find a little time to do your part. I'm doing my part because I care. Do you? Let's start the morning off right. The morning edition is live. That's what we think, guys. That's Start your day with the morning edition. Weekdays at 7 a.m. right here on the ZNS Network. You're watching the ZNS Network, the People's Station. It's new, it's informative, it's educational, it's exciting, and yes, 
you are part of it. Good morning and welcome to Direct Talk, a new two-hour talk show on the biggest network in the country. Broadcasting live from our studios here in the capital city of Nassau, that's 1540 AM and 104.5 FM. We also simulcasting live on the Freeport Grand Bahama, that's 810 on your radio dial, and we are live on Television 13. Or you can join us on any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Just go to the ZNS official page and join us on Facebook. Only the sun covers the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos better than ZNS. I'd like to welcome any of you to the second half of the double header. As you would have been tuning into my good friend Spence Finlayson, a mangrove key boy, in the first ha segment where he had his first show. Um, his guests included, I mean, they were talking about their community. I mean, they were proud. I mean, he had this place light right up. Well, just how proud they were about their community in Nassau. I got some people here to talk about a place called Ragged Island today. And so this show today is brought to you by Bahamas Air. We don't just fly here, we live here. By the Cancer Treatment Center of America and by Sankey Global products, that is the supplements to aid reducing high blood pressure and reducing uh, diabetes. Call the, I'll have the numbers for you to call Sankey today. The Bahamas comprise of some 700 island and keys. The island of Ragged Island is some 23 kilometers located in the southern Bahamas. Ragged Island is part of the Jamitos chain of islands, over 180 kilometers in length. That includes the keys known as Raccoon Key, Hog Key, Double Breasted Key, the Twin Key, Buena Vista Key, and Flamingo Key. The population of Ragged Island in 2010 was some 72 persons. The census of 1926 had Ragged Island with a population of some 366 persons. The island, though small in size, has produced some of the most outstanding builders of this country in the field of medicine, politics, culture, law enforcement, education, and some of the best boat builders and seafarers in the world, not in the Bahamas, in the world, come from Ragged Island. Today is Ragged Island Pride Day. <coughs> Topic of the show is the beauty of Ragged Island. <laughs> Joining me in studio today, uh, I got a cadre of persons headed up by Pastor Arthur Leroy Maycock, District Overseer of the Church of God of Prophecy in Ragged Island. Welcome to Direct Talk. Thank you. We going to invite you to invoke divine guidance as we begin the show today. Let us bow our heads. Eternal and everlasting Father, in the precious name of Jesus, and by your spirit, Lord, we come to you. We give you thanks for this day, for this is indeed, Lord, the day that you have made. We will rejoice in, and be glad in it. Father, we invoke your presence in this place. And as we come, Lord, we come presenting the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We pray, dear Lord, that you will bless each island within the chain. We pray, dear Lord, that you will bless our prime minister. Yes. We pray that you will bless our deputy prime minister. We pray, Lord, also for the leader of the opposition. We pray for all members of parliament. Lord, we pray, dear God, that you will bless the Bahamas throughout, from Grand Bahama in the north to Inago in the south. Lord, we pray, dear God, that not forgetting the island of Ragged Island. Yes. Lord, we pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit will hoover, continue to hoover over Ragged Island. Bless the people there. Bless the resources. Father, we pray, dear God, that you will bless our host. We pray, dear Lord, that you will take charge of this country, this beautiful country, Lord, that you have given to us. We pray that your will will have free course throughout these islands. We pray, dear God, for our police officers, our correctional officers, defense force officers, immigration, and also custom officers, Lord. We pray, dear God, that you will take charge. Have your way among us, dear Lord, for indeed, dear Lord, without you, we can do nothing. We pray now, Lord, that 
you will bless the host, Brother David G., oh, Father, and all the guests on this program today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Um, you know, I had two persons trying to find someone to pray for me today. Um, I had Gloria Wallace, um, who found you, and uh, I've, I had Sister Mispa, who found Bishop John Ferguson. Um, Bishop John couldn't join us in the studio, and so I got to have a show with him. Uh, he seems to be very historical, so I'm going to set up a time that I could bring him in the studio to talk about his wonderful journey. Uh, and his father, who I to I'm told just recently passed away. Um, so we'll talk about them. Tell us, you are a descendant of Ragged Island. Uh, your mom was from Ragged Island? No, my father. Your father, okay. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Church of God of Prophecy. I know you're being challenged now in Ragged Island. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Give God thanks to be here. The Church of God of Prophecy in Ragged Island uh, was established, so to speak, or it was visited by the former one of our former general overseers, Ambrose Tomlinson. He visited Ragged Island, and then after that, uh, Bishop Fred and Sister Lily okay. would have go to Ragged Island as missionaries and further continue to work there in Ragged Island. So the church now is, I know you have your challenges with the hurricane. Yes. Um, Back in 2017, when the hurricane Irma okay. um, has devastated the island of Ragged Island, and that's about everything there was partially destroyed, including the church. Okay, the church is still in its foundational stage. We are about to rebuild the church, and while I would mention that, I call upon all Ragged Islanders to join in yes. to assist in the rebuilding of the church. At Ragged Island. Uh, especially the descendants of Ragged Island. Yes, especially yeah. the descendants. That's where the, where the population is. Yes, yes. Yeah. But we wish you all the best as you continue to worship and serve your Lord. The, the song, so when you were talking about the foundation, the song that came to my mind is the church's it's one, one foundation. It's Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ our Lord. Yes. She is a new, new creation. creation. Yes. yes. And so we wish you all the best and thank you for accepting the invitation. Uh, you got to stay, stay on the firing line. Yes. <laughs> the yes. song says, if you're in the battle... For the for Lord and, and right, <laughs> stay on the firing okay, line. Yes, if to win my brother, surely you must fight. All the best. Thank you. Today, I, I know two hours is not sufficient. Mm. But I have to give Ragged Island another day. <laughs> um, just like I had to do Cat Island. I, and I said to them, we were in Turks and Caicos for a week. And so I realized the history and the culture of these islands, it is so not easy to capture in two hours. Joining me today, Dr. Francina Tristan. Uh, mother was Maycock, a knee Maycock. Welcome to Direct Talk. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about who this Dr. Francina Tristan is. <clears throat> well, I was christened Francina Yvonne Roker, the daughter of Viola Roker, knee Maycock. Okay. And Frank Roker. Okay. I am married to a Thurston. Okay. And the question always comes up, is your husband from Cat Island? Okay. But he's not. His daddy is from San Salvador. Okay. But his grandfather was a teacher, so you know they that could around. go anyway. Yeah, but around. anyway, I claim all the Turks and all the Thurstons in, in, in Cat Island as my family. Okay. So mommy, mommy grew up on, on Ragged Island? Yes. Did you spend any time on Ragged Island? Well, I lived on Ragged Island for 18 years. Okay. You know, coming to New Providence periodically on, on the boat. But I lived and grew in Ragged Island from the time I was born until I was 18. Okay. Tell us about the history of Ragged Island. Who founded this, this sweet little place called Ragged Island? Now, it's my understanding I always thought that Ragged Island was founded by Mr. Duncan Taylor, but that is not so. Um, Ragged Island, the charter, was granted to a William Lockhart okay. from the 1700s. And um, Duncan and his brother Archibald, they settled the um, <clears throat> Saul Vans in the 1800s. So the majority of Ragged Islanders, um, their descendants, went to Ragged Island 
shortly after the influx of the loyalists. That would have been back in the 1800s. So you yes. have been raking salt in Long Island a long time. I mean, yes, in Ragged Island. Um, salt was prominent in Ragged Island during the, the time of the loyalists. It's, it's, it's mentioned in, in the history book. And um, we, were, we, were, we were raking salt. They settled the salt bands. The um, reservoir runs down the western side. And then they have salt bands cut out. And so you use sluice to get the water into the salt bands. And during the summer months from now, salt is beginning to form. And then what, did, what happens after the salt form? Because you know, I, I'm from Grand Bahama. Okay. We never see salt in our life, other than we see it on the Martin Ball box. <laughs> <laughs> OK, when the, um, our parents watch until there was a skim, and they can tell by the skim on top of the water if the salt is ready to rake. The rake was made from a um, barrel with a long handle. The bar you know, the barrel has a uh -huh. kind of curvature. Okay. And so you push the salt, you push the salt into the dam. And then you take a shovel, you shovel up the salt, put it on the dam, and it drains dry for two, three days. Then you would carry that salt from the salt pond dams into, or up into the land and you form salt heaps <clears throat> until you're ready to sell it to Nassau. How, 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 how did you used to get to Nassau? Um, well, you know, all the salt had to be carried on your head. Say what? In baskets. So we, we call it totem salt, totem salt. And um, you had to do about, make about, carry, make about six trips from the, the pond in there before you go to school in the mornings. That was a part of our, our routine. Chores. Of our chores. Also, bring in water from Hoss, Horsewell, which is outside of the community, was a part of their routine as well. You really grew up on the island. And um, when, 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 when I first started to, to carry water, we used the biscuit container. You remember that? What is the biscuit container? Biscuit is um, sweet biscuit used to come in a silver container. Yes. And so then you would put um, grape leaf in that so it wouldn't, the water would not splash out. Or <laughs> at that time, we say the spirit wouldn't play in the water. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and so we had to do about four or five of those before we, we, we went to school. So we, we, had a, we had quite a number of chores. Today is going to be historical. Uh, I have in studio, Mr. Emmett Monroe, one of the best captains that have ever sailed the sea. Ragged Island, aside from its beautiful ladies, as I must tell you, and they're very petite. They, you, you, you could always tell them Ragged Island ladies. Um, I also have a Miss Mispa Pintad Monroe. She has transformed the studio today. She brought, and she's matching, you know, she bought the, 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 mat, the mat, she brought the basket, she brought the bag, she bought, say the only thing grows on Ragged Island is tamarind. Mm -hmm. uh, she bought the tamarind and she brought the salt. She's going to join us uh, a little bit later today. Mm -hmm. And she's provided us with a list of names of outstanding citizens who have helped to build this country. We can take our first station break. When I come back, I'm going to be joined with Captain Emmett Monroe. He's been sailing the seas for many, many years. Mm -hmm. A proud Ragged Islander. When he goes back to Ragged Islander, they start mm -hmm. singing the song, The King is Coming. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you tune into Direct Talk. As we go to our first station break, I'm your host, David G. When I had got prostate we have an all-points bulletin out for pressure and sugar. These bad boys have been running the streets for too long. Officer Cornu has come to lock them up and take them down with Sankey Global's 50-year-old 100% natural, 100% plant-based formulas. If you've been aiding and abetting pressure and sugar or feel threatened by either one of these criminals, do not hesitate to contact our hotline. It's time to get them out of your home. Officer Cornu can be reached at 242-439-2425 or check out your local Sankey rep. For as long as we've been a country, these islands have been a favorite for royalty. And for as long as the royals have adored us as a people, 
We've always been hospitable and gracious hosts. From a colony to a nation, now on the cusps of its golden anniversary, these shores have celebrated royal visits with class and dignity that is wholly Bahamian. As Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth celebrates her platinum anniversary on the throne, the islands of the Bahamas welcomes the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge on this, their first visit to the country. Our coverage starts Thursday, March 24 at 4 p.m. and continues through their departure Saturday, March 26. The ZNS Network, your home for the royal visit, William and Kate. Base Tourism supplies almost $50 million in revenue for Androsians every year. These priceless resources will continue to provide renewable benefits for thousands of people for years to come, as long as we take long-term action to preserve what's rightfully ours. The natural environment has played a vital role in our culture and economy for generations. Let's take care of nature, and nature will take care of us. Hepatitis is the inflammation of the liver, which is the organ responsible for filtering toxins from the body, producing bile for digestion, and producing proteins and clotting factors. The most important cause of hepatitis worldwide is viruses, of which there are five main types, A, B, C, D, and E. Hepatitis B and C are major health challenges globally, affecting over 300 million persons worldwide. The suspicion of hepatitis may be a challenge as there are typically no symptoms. However, if infected, non-specific symptoms may include decreased appetite, nausea, vague abdominal discomfort, jaundice or yellow eyes, and abnormal liver function tests. If not treated, hepatitis of any type can lead to cirrhosis and liver cancer, which leads to over 1 million deaths worldwide. If you suspect you may have been exposed to the virus that causes hepatitis, talk to your doctor today and get tested. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Public Hospitals Authority in conjunction with the Medical Association of the Bahamas and the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Welcome back to Direct Talk. I'm your host, David G., here in the capital city of Nassau. Flew in today, this morning on Bahamas Air. I had to go back home last night to prepare for two cruise ships in Freeport today. Oh. Uh, Carnival Dream and, mm -hmm. and Norwegian Sky. And <clears throat> so we had to go and get the beach ready for, for the event today. And so we expect about five or 600 persons to come to the beach today. Oh, we still live in the best country on God. Oh, uh, yes. It's most Amen. beautiful. And persons travel from around the world to enjoy it. So I came back on Bahamas Air, 7.30 flight this morning, left at 7.29, mm. landed at 8.05, five minutes before it was due to land at 8.10. And so I said, salute to Bahamas Air. That's right. Joining me now, the one of Ch uh, Ragged Island's favorite son, Emmett Monroe. Welcome to Direct Talk. Thank you very much, Mr. Wallace. Tell us who this <clears throat> Emmett Monroe is, where he was born, where he, who he grew up with, where, where, who's his parents, how much children they had. Talk about it. Well, <clears throat> I was born in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, by my parents, Laurel and Bristol Monroe, to Oscar Taylor Monroe. I was raised and grow and wake in Ragged Island. Mm -hmm. All what I all what I know was taught to me in Ragged Island by my parents, my grandparents, and my uncles, aunts. They all helped take care of me. How much children mommy and daddy had? Mommy and daddy had 10 children. Stop it, all this. See how good your memory is. Emmett, I, I am the eldest, Emmett Monroe. Uh -huh. Then Orlean Monroe Maycock. Okay. Then uh, Arlington Monroe deceased. Okay. Then uh, Juanita Monroe. Okay. Then uh, Reba. Reba Monroe. Mm -hmm. And Oscar Monroe deceased. Just passed away. Just passed away. Yes. Then Sylvia Monroe deceased. Vanessa. We have Vanessa. Uh -huh. 
and uh, Joseph Monroe uh -huh. and Kenan Monroe was the last. The baby. The baby. He died also. Okay. Um, who was mommy's mommy and daddy? <clears throat> who, was the, who was the grandparents on your mommy's side? The grandparents um, on my mommy's side was Sylvia and uh, Lockett Monroe. Okay. And on daddy's side? On the daddy's side was Joseph Henry Monroe. Okay. And, and so you were going to school right in Duncan Down? Yes, I went to school in Duncan Down, Reggie Allen. I leave school at the age of uh, between 14 and 15 and went to see with my father on the boat. Because <laughs> that's all I had wanted to do <laughs> in my growing up. <laughs> As a little boy? As a little boy. You don't get on that boat? I won't get on that boat. Mm -hmm. um, before we get to the boat story, who was the teacher? Uh, as, as when you growing the up? Fight, my teacher was, first was uh, Milo Strong. Okay. Then after Milo Strong, it was uh, Mr. Thompson. Okay. From Mr. Thompson, it was Mr. Delaware, Felix Delaware. Okay. After Mr. Delaware, it was Cecil Curling. Okay. A native of Regular. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see for the first time. I went to the sea, the sea for the first time in 1954. Wow. At the age of 15 years. My first trip was from Ragged Island to Boca Samar, Cuba. Somewhere? Just Cuba, mm -hmm. Boca Samar, Cuba. With my father, he was captain of a great big sailboat, very bigger than the Courageous Elm. And we leave on the Ragged Island in the morning, that morning around about 7.30, 8 o'clock. Yeah, 7 30, 8 o'clock. Uh -huh. And around 5 o'clock, we were anchor in Samar Harbor. Cuba. Uh -huh. In Samar, Cuba, which is about 60 miles from Ragged Island. Who, who, who was the, what was the name of the ship, the boat? The name of the, of the boat was the Spectator. Who, and who it was owned by? It was owned by my father and his cousin and his uncle. And my father was the captain. So what y'all used to do when you go to Cuba? You used to go to trade or? Yeah, we go to trade. We go and we buy plantain, banana, maltino, we call maltonic, potato, eddy, um, peanut, you name it, whatever we could have. Furniture. What you could have get to bring the, the Nassau to trade, that's what we used to do. Mm -hmm. And so and to, well, okay. when I joined the boat, uh -huh. You know, the boy always be the cook. <laughs> <laughs> I started out as the cook. Mm. And after, you know, they see I could cook. You know, and when you go on the boat as a cook, you never, the beers go on shares. And you can never get no full shell like a man. You can get half a shell or a quarter shell. Of, you get half a shell if you could. Managed. If you, if you could do any of you could could do your work, <laughs> but if you can't, if you can't do, you can get quarter share, and you got to wake yourself up for them to advance your pay, which I think is a good way. And how much did, how much you was making back then when you go to work? Well, you we just, just go on shares. Okay. The first trip we made, my half a share for seventeen pound ten. My father gave me two pound ten. Mm -hmm. And he take fifteen pound. Say, I'm at this your money, seventeen pound ten. I can give you two pound ten. He say, I ask him, he tell me, <laughs> I can give you two pound ten. And this fifteen pound I can take him to give to Laurel. Mm -hmm. That's that's his wife, which is my mother. Oh. And they don't mean to say anything. <laughs> when we arrive home, he give the money to my mother. My mother called me, say, Emmett, this fifteen pound. Your daddy bring, say, it's your money, which I know it was the truth. Yes. Because that's the guy he tell me now, so he bring it to her. Right. And she tell me, now, you go to the post office, open up a savings account, mm -hmm. and bring that bank book home to me. Mm -hmm. And that's like what I did. Before I go, sorry. That's all right. Before I go anywhere, before I could do anything or go anywhere, that's what I had to do. 
had to take that money home. Mm. Had to take so when you after you all left Cuba, uh, the stuff that you all bought, you all took it to Ragged Island or you all came to Nassau? No, no, we came to Nassau with it. See, we stopped in the Ragged Island to give your family banana and plant mm -hmm. and thing. We stopped on for boat, maybe one four or five hours, mm -hmm. and then we hit to Nassau because you know they got the plant and banana and thing on the boat, and you don't want it to to, to ripe up. That's the perishable. Mm -hmm. That's perishable. We come to Nassau. Down to the market dock, the market range. Ankle to the boat, bow, bow out, stern in. You drop two ankle out in the front of the boat. Uh, you back the boat into the dock and put two line out to keep mm -hmm. the boat steady. And then you begin to, to sell your products. And you know, Ron, those days, those regular island boats was like a bank. Because the people to the market used to come to the boat and credit stuff mm -hmm. and pay when they don't sell the, mm -hmm. the products. So they come buy it from you like wholesale? Yeah, yeah, they come credit. Yeah, credit from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, you know, my, my father and, and the other gentlemen who are both they didn't know them. And that's how they used to trade. Mm -hmm. You know, tr they used to trade like that. And when they don't sell the goods, they bring the money back like what they get from from the from the from the boat, mm -hmm. and give it to my father. Yeah. How long did it used to take you all to sail from Ragged Island to Nassau? Uh, on a good day or a bad day? Yeah. Okay, I would say in a good day, it'll be about 26 hours. Okay. A bad day, then you got let if you got a beat from 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 uh, Ragged Island to Nassau, it can take about three to four days. Depends on the weather. Because it's a sailboat. A sailboat. If you got a straight, if you want a straight view, you ain't got to be talking up and down. Those big 24 feet boat and 26 feet boat could have do it in 24, 26 hours easy. Because mm -hmm. I see we get it in the spectator many a times. Mm -hmm. And when y'all used to go to Cuba, you, you, this was this would have been before Fidel Castro took yes. over in 1959. Mm -hmm. yes. So it was easy to go to Cuba, and a lot of Cubans seem to have come to come to Ragged Island on their boats back in the days as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was good up until the Castro Agreement. 1959. Yeah, because you know during that time when they was fighting, we used to still go to Cuba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we used to still go to Cuba. You, you didn't know what he was fighting for. Huh? No, no, no. <laughs> and they now used to board us, you know. Okay. And then after the Cuba trade, I mean, after the revolution, we still used to go and you could get things. Mm -hmm. But after the years roll on, the things started slowing down. You couldn't get the plant and banana and thing. Mm -hmm. So we had to stop. I see why Ragged Island people like planting so. Mm -hmm. Charmaine, all you want is plant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. And you know, when, when you go to Cuba and come back and eat, uh, the, 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 every, every man on the boat used to get a bunch of plant, a bunch of banana to take home for their family. Mm -hmm. And then you could, if you want the boat, you, you could buy some yourself different from the shell, mm -hmm. what you can get from the boat, you know. And every host used to have those things. You never know, saw you worry about being hungry or nothing like that. You only be hungry on regular island if you're lazy. Mm -hmm. And you ain't have time to be lazy because your parents ain't gonna allow you to sit down in the house and don't go toad salt or go for wood because you gotta go to go for wood to cook. Because mm -hmm. each house had a kitchen mm -hmm. on the other side of the house, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's where you keep your water barrel, your, your fresh water, and your broccoli water. So you had two different waters? To, 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 mm -hmm. Yeah, Francine, I mean, yeah. she can tell you. She and, can. Uh, um, uh, most, um, many of the houses had a water tank uh, attached to the house. Right. Come a little closer to you, And his mama... Come closer to the mic. Uh -huh. and, and his mama, um, Annie Laurel, that's what we call her, uh -huh. she was she was cousin. She had a water tank. Emmett's house was, Emmett's parents' house was near to the school. Okay. Annie Laurel had a water tank. And a, sometime during the year, there was no water in the school. There was very little water in the tank. But whenever the school tank was empty, we would go to Auntie Laurel to get water. <laughs> and she would say, I can't give all of y'all water, but she'll give us a little bit. And then one day she called me, she say, Francina, she say, if you want water, 
say, don't call me the whole lack crab. Come by yourself. Come by yourself. Because you see, I was a cousin. You see, cousin on both sides. Emmett's father and... Your father. Emmett and I, we share the same gra great-grandfather. Okay. We are the children of Francis and um, Israel Deems. Okay. And Francis was Magog. Okay. <clears throat> and Francis was brother to Uriah, the great-grandfather of um, Rev. Okay. Small world. Who would have been some of your childhood friends, Emmett, who you went to school with growing up? On My Rest childhood Island? friends was uh, Ignatius Wallace. Okay. He is the pas pastor to the Cat Holy Innocent Church in Dunkertown, Rhode Island. Cat we were schoolmates. Okay. Then... Well, most of my schoolmates deceased. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it was Lake Henderson, Pintard. Okay. He and I was great friends. We used to sit in the same class, mm -hmm. in the same desk, side by side, mm -hmm. until he leave from Rugged Island to come to Nassau okay. to go to school. Okay. But I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to go on the boat. Yeah, go with mm -hmm. Daddy. Yeah, I want to go with Daddy. Because, you know, Henderson had two elder brothers who used to be on the boat with with their father, okay. and they didn't want all the boys to do the same thing. But I was the eldest one of my father's uh, son, so I had to go on the boat with him mm -hmm. to help him. Mm -hmm. Who would have been and, some of the boat builders in Ragged Island back in the day? Well, How you always get these boats to the sea? Well, well, uh, I used to build them. You had some great boat builders in Ragged Island. You had uh, Mr. James Adley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He built some nice, fast, Boat, like the Alvara, mm -hmm. the Kelsey, mm -hmm. the Ventus, mm -hmm. the Arvis, mm -hmm. on, I think it's a, uh, oh, gee, the one with, And then you had Horace. The Convince. Yeah, Convince, that was, that was, um. Roger Monroe. And John Pindad. Right, and John Pindad. Uh-huh. Then yes. you had, uh. The Casilda. Uh, no, I tell you, that's Horace Wilson. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was a great uh, boat builder. He built the uh, Casilda, the Conchita, mm -hmm. and a few more boats like what he built. Yeah. His son built one called the Omega. Mm -hmm. Who's who his son? A Vivian. Wilson. Okay. okay. Yeah. I heard you know, Horace Wilson was a big shot. He was a big man in in, in regular. He was, he was. Yeah. He was a. Was, yeah. He was one of the. Well, just run around here. Yeah. 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 You know, they, they give me a story that one day, you know, they used to always come down from their home in the morning time to meet with the other gentlemen, the other men and things, to have a little conversation and things. So Mr. Hart, Mr. Wilson come down the road one morning and he said, no, and when he get down there, Mr. Hardley say, Horace boy, I just set me up a bonefish. That, that's the wire. When he said the wire up, long, lanky, and lean okay. for speed. Okay. So he just set him up a bonefish. Mm. So he was turned around and he looked. He said, okay, I got up in the big yard now and I can set me up a bonefish. <laughs> 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 and that's how they used to compete. Compete amongst right. themselves, you know. Then you had another builder there. You call Fred Bridgewater. Yeah, Fred, Fred. He used Fred, to build huh? all those big, those big boats and things. to go to Haiti and Cuba and thing, you know. He built, he built the Spectator, the one with my father was captain of. He built the Exam. He mm. built the Bahama Carol. Where did he get the wood from to build these boats? He used to get the pine. Used to come from from uh, Nassau. Mm -hmm. He used to get the pine. I think it was Andres. Okay. But you know, they used to get the, the wood out of. The lumber, the lumber yard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the frame used to come from Andres. Mm -hmm. okay. And then they dress it up to their likeness and their fashion, mm -hmm. how they want to do it. Wow. And then, Emmett, you left out, um, did you mention Roderick Monroe? Uh, who else? And, and Edgar Moxie? I'll tell you now, I ain't get to them yet. Okay. Uh, well, Roderick Monroe, he wasn't a boat builder, but he had... You know, he, 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 got, he had finance where he could get both of him and Edgar Moxie was in partner together okay. with the, with the convince. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then after that, they got what you call the Henry Marvel, which was a great big two-master schooner. Mm -hmm. 
I think it was, this was built by James Adderley. Yeah. But then you just will recall this Edgar Moxie. Edgar Moxie, or his father was from Reggae Dollar. His mother from, was from Farmerski Exuma. Okay. But his, his father married to his mother, and he lived in Farmerski. Yeah, she said she wasn't leaving Farmerski. No, 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 no. <laughs> he, he had to go there. He had to go there. <laughs> and you know, he said that then he go, he can build his house here. But he ain't gonna build no 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 uh, stone house. Mm -hmm. He can build a wooden house. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he decided to do foolish. <laughs> the first sailboat come around half a ski. He can knock that down. <laughs> 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 go to <wreck> it down. <laughs> Any other builders, builders um, Doctor Taster? Yeah, you had um, my my uncle um, Lincoln L. J. Maker. Okay. He built one of the fastest sloop sailing sloop. This um. Bahamas was ever seen, the okay. brothers. Okay. But he lived in in Farmerski along with his cousin Raya. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. But um the funny thing Uncle Lincoln said he built a boat and the boat was sailing good. And he had a dream that Captain Horace came to him in a dream and told him to change something in the boat and the boat would be faster. And he did it and that's what happened. Wow. Wow. But but yep. he they, they learned the trade trade from Captain Horace. Um I'm built yeah, for I remember that, you know, that, that, that race we had in Monarchy Bay mm. with the brothers and I tried to move to Courageous was there. I know I, I was with the, I think I was sailing mm -hmm. with them on the good news. Okay. Okay. The Courageous wasn't in the making yet. Okay. Mm. And the brothers happened to, to beat us and beat us a good distance. Mm -hmm. Maybe about half an hour because you know the wind drop off. Right. Mm -hmm. Light and where the brothers was. She could have more side to the buoy. Okay. Mm -hmm. When she went around the buoy, the tide was going with her. Uh -huh. And the rest of the boat was coming towards the buoy, and the tide was against them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I think this was for some big occasion, too, eh? The Queen's visit. Yeah, this, this was a big year, so. Yeah. Okay. The jokiest part, <laughs> when, the, when the race finished, that time, Mr. Maycock walking on Bay, on uh, Montague. Uh -huh. Yeah, he always got his basket on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Walking, you know, he walking a little heavy up like. Mm -hmm. So them boys say, Mr. Maycock, he said, that's how you do them boys? He said, that's what she was built for. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you all used to trade with Haiti as well. Yeah. Talk about the trips to Haiti how, and how long that, that used to take. The trip, the trip to Haiti used to take at least about four, about four days. Because Haiti was far. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes when you get up under the land, and you got calm, you know, for a couple of hours. Also, anyhow, you, you're at least about four days to go to Haiti. Which, which part of Haiti you, you are went to? Sometimes we used to go to Porto Bay. Okay. Okay. Sometimes Ganive. Okay. The most of the time we used to go to Ganive to get those mangrove, those big Martin mm -hmm. Francis, and, and come to Nassau to the market. And sell them? And sell them. What you used to pick up the mangoes for back in Haiti back in the days? Thank you, man. How much it cost? What a cost? What a box of mango cost? In those days, you could get a hundred mango for a dollar. Mm. In Haiti? In Haiti. Less than that. So y'all gonna than... load that boat right down? Load it right down. Load it right down. And come to market in Nassau. Come to Nassau and sell it cheap mm -hmm. and make money and go again. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make a trip to Haiti in at least about uh, two, about three weeks. Because when you get those mango, you can get them. You can get them green. Mm -hmm. But if you don't get to market in time, <laughs> <laughs> they can rape on you. They can rape on you. <laughs> so what cost? What cost that to stop? Because that seemed to have been a good trade going on between. Well, you know, as the time goes on, then sometimes the farmers to the old island, like you look to them, you just complain to them and saying that the Haitian mangrove was stopping their trade and mm -hmm. blah okay. blah blah. So it was an attempt to try and get more behemoths to get into the market. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And then they, they came up with something about the health. Yeah, they say that. Then they came up with something to say, my God, fly and all kind of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. That's to, to stop need, you from going. Yeah, they, need yeah. they need environmental yeah. health uh, approval yeah. and all that. Some of the surnames synonymous with Ragged Island include Monroe, Maycock, Lockhart, Hebron, Moxie, Wilson, Joffa, Ambrister, Curlin, Roca, Pintad, Nesbitt, Humes, Higgs, Bridgewater, and Wallace. 
Mm -hmm. Talk about these last names and the history of some of these forefathers. Okay, I, I could talk about, I'm going to start off with the Wallace. Why, why you want to start off with them? That's because okay. um, um, Wallace was a big name. <laughs> Wallace, Wilson, I make up with big names. And okay. if you study the history very carefully, the others kind of right in there with them. Right. They are all interrelated to those major names. Okay. Okay? But I'm going to start with Philip Wallace. Philip Wallace um, was born in May 1829. He is the, um, the first Wallace that we know of. And Philip died in 1897. He died from paralysis, I guess that's probably a stroke. Mm -hmm. And um, he was registrar of births and death of, of Ragged Island until he died. Now, Philip was married to Eliza Wild Goose, and he had a whole lot of wives. So, you gotta be Wallace, a whole lot of wives. Yeah, <laughs> with, with, um, with um, Miss Wild Goose, he had Matilda, Clara, James, Susan, Philip Bobo, that's my great great grandfather, and Philip and Margaret Ann. And then he had 12 children with a Lucy Pinder. And that's where all these other Wallaces came in, Benjamin and the whole lot. So uh, the Wallaces and Ragged Island, it's the same family. Okay. They're all brothers to Bobo. Philip. Philip is a good man. I salute And Philip. then he had some children with, um, um, no, he, that's all the children he had. Now, Bobo is my great-grandfather, and Bobo had a whole lot of the children as well with different people. Philip, Philip, that's well, Philip my grandma daddy. was, um, <clears throat> my grandmother was Priscilla Taylor. Okay. And Priscilla didn't marry him. But Priscilla had a whole lot of children for, for Bobo. And um, Bobo Philip Wallace. And from those children you get, um, you get Norris Wallace. Okay. That's the Loxley and, and Allen and those family. Okay. And you get Phoebe Jane. Okay. That's um, Priscilla, grandmother, Priscilla Johnson. Okay. You get Mary, that's my grandmother. And, um, and uh, um, Mary had Uncle Lincoln, I'm um, sorry, Lincoln, Maycock, and all those. <clears throat> and then um, there were a whole lot in the States. Ulrich and James and a whole lot of them over there. So <clears throat> whatever Wallace you see running around, in New York and what have you? Why were these in Philip? They, you're right. Okay. And I'll give you a story. I went to Rotesta to, to spend a Christmas. And the, play, the, the lady I was living with, <clears throat> a young man came to visit there. He didn't say a word. I didn't know him. He was coming up the stairs. I said to the lady, that's Wallace. She said, well, how you know that? I said, I just look at his head and face. You know, you, you David, you all have that Wallace look. And so... Um, and Bobo was a school teacher, and when I read up the information on them, they had this board, and it was a Maycock and a Wilson and a, and a Locker, a, a Maycock, a Wilson, and a Wallace. They were in this, on this board, and I read what they say. Don't let Bobo know we have this meeting, because you know he probably was somebody who questioned everything. <laughs> so it's like, we, we call in this meeting, but don't let him know. Okay. You understand? Who would be some of the other it's, last names? Uh-huh, yeah. Who would be some of the other last names of Ragged Island? And then, of course, we have the Maycocks. Right. And the Maycocks started off with Pat Charles. Um, and Pat Charles had one son, Pat William, and then he went on to have, came right down to all of um, um, Uriah. Uriah is, <clears throat> sorry, my great-grandfather and his great-great-grandfather, and Fanny, da Fanny Dames Maycock. That's his great-grandmother. Okay. So, but these Maycocks came, they weren't slave. They were coming into the Bahamas when slavery was abolished. Okay. Two of them stopped off in Barbados. Okay. Three came to Ragged Island, and <clears throat> one went to Cuba, and I think one of those went into Rum, um, rum key. Okay. And so that's how you have these makeups all over the place. And that, that's how we, um, that's how we, uh, that's how we develop. That's the island of Ragged Island up, up on the, up on the screen now. Okay. Uh, do you have goats in, in Ragged Island as well? 
Big about? Goats and... Uh, oh, oh, yeah. I had a lot of goats myself, because I remember Mr. Sean, the teachers, they called me the goat boy. <laughs> 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 we had so much, so many goats in the field. Near, near, we used to live near the school. And, you know, I used to make sure I had to keep my goat tight from, you know, because goat all this, going to look for the highest peak. Then my goat can be all up, all up on the... On the on the, the, the water tank top. Oh yes. Running and pitching and ring, you know, and and the goat didn't and, and people don't like that. I had my my father did, did buy me a brown and white goat, and that goat just had two and three kid. Every time she dropped kid, two and three, and I used to uh, my take that goat out in the morning, tie him out, bring him back home in the evening because if you leave it out in the night, the dog can kill him. Yeah. And them dog and them goats start breeding, mm -hmm. having kids, having and they keep it growing, keep it growing. And then when they get so many goats in the yard, you gotta put them on the key. Mm -hmm. Put them on. On the keys, cause okay. right all have a lot of keys. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm told that the, and if the goat was caught eating somebody in um, farm, uh, that they had a good prison. Y'all had a yep. prison. Yeah, the place you call the pond, the goat pond, the goat pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, on the pond. And if you're good, if you're good, uh, break the rope uh -huh. and go in some boy, because all the whole houses and they had little farm in the yard. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you're good, go in those people's farm, then they go report you, and you gotta go <laughs> pay the damage. And but yeah, you are, we are the goat policeman. On regular, dollar. Yeah, a good policeman. <laughs> and sometimes you got the goat tie on a, on a little, on a, on a rock. And the goat gets so big, they could drag the rock, you see? <laughs> and if that goat drag the rock near the street and get in the street, and the goat policeman come walking down the street, he can take that goat and he can carry him in the pond, mm. and you got to go pay to get him out. Mm. <laughs> Lock up your goat. Lock up your goat. <laughs> and and, and um, you had sheep on Ragged Island as well, and cows, uh, but the cows rode in the pasture. Yeah? Yeah. yeah I, I, so you all, you all were self-contained. Self uh, and, 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 yeah, yeah. and everybody had a chicken, yeah, and everybody see, probably had a goat. On Ragged Island. I bet time to, if, if times, if um, you couldn't get any fish or on all the meat and the... And you had to kill one of those chickens that was weeping on the veil and because that was your pet. <laughs> See, on Ragged Island, every family had goat, some had pig, and we used to raise them. Mm -hmm. Chicken, plenty chicken. Oh, yeah. And we used to go fishing, let it get me and uh, Freddie Wallace. Freddie, yes. We had school, though, like on Friday, we get together and go in a little smart boat. And another one friend you called Patrick Magok. Mm hmm And then Harum Lockett. So you had to go skull in there, or you all had engine? Uh, no, we, we used to have a skull, a skull and pole, because you ain't had no engine. <laughs> no. But when we get up to little size, they used to allow the like, two or three of us to go in the little smart boat to go to the, down to the key fishing. Mm hmm And we used to always make preparation for our little trip. On that weekend, mm. so we start out a little tin tub <laughs> with your sand, and then you got your tree rock and your little pot. Then Freddie come from Ashes Hill, mm. he'll bring a little bit of rice or a little bit of grits. <laughs> and when I come in from home, I can bring a little bit of sugar. I can, but we can make bring enough stuff to make something to cook. Uh -huh. So on the on Patrick make our daddy yard. A little smart boy used to call the mill. Okay. It is shaped like a mill. <laughs> he, did, he was just as wide, he is long. Uh -huh. That was Enriquez Maycock. Uh -huh. That was yeah, his boat. Yeah. And when we go down, when we going down to the key, when we leave in the schoolhouse dock, Francis, you know the schoolhouse yeah, dock. The schoolhouse dock, right off. And then you have a, a pint, a couple of hundred feet from the dock called Belobi Point. Uh -huh. Yes. Then we get a brass of Belobi Point. Freddie done got smoke in the galley. <laughs> he got, got on peas, boiling peas. <laughs> when we get down by Dowell Key, we stop, get some conk to go fishing in Jemski Cut. Uh -huh. When we get in Jemski Cut and we anchor, the first time it come on deck, that don't go in the bell, that go in the pot. <laughs> Straight in the pot. Freddie cook it. Oh, Freddie cook it. <laughs> oh, but David, what was so funny with the sea was talking about the keys. Our mothers used to go to the key to cut top. Okay. And honestly, these these women could not swim. 
and the boat would anchor there, and the water would be up by your neck, and the, they hold it on the rope to get into the key. And they would get all sort of cup and then gather bird eggs. Say what? Uh-huh. Yeah. It, was, it was so funny. I, I was on one of those trips. I say, but boy, we used to take some chances. You couldn't swim the water up here, up by your neck. You're bobbing up to you. Who would have been some of the prominent families in Ragged Island when you would have been growing up? <laughs> Throw some names of some. As you come, take me from east to west. Or, uh, oh, I'll take you from... North. I'll start from... Ashesil. Well, Ashesil is yeah. the north. Yeah. Start yeah. from the north. Come Okay, yeah. Ashesil. You have uh, Rasmus. Uncle Ricky. Oh, uh, Wallace. Okay. And then James Wallace, that's one of his son. Mm hmm Then you come up now. Who, James? Who? James. James, well, that's Freddie Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who was married to? To Miss Evelyn. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wallace. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes. yes. They, they were our neighbors. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then you met, you come and you meet the Maycocks. Okay. Because that's before the road, that's at the road come like this. I said, so we are, and I was here, okay. But, then you meet the Make Ox. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Rick is the Make Ox. That's and Rashti. And Miss Washtai. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, and Ada, your, 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 grand, your, your daddy, granddaddy. I mean, daddy, please. Okay. By German. Yeah, and then now you come on the other side of the, of the, of the, of the street, we're going to the pond. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then you had the Monroe's. That's my father. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you had the Lockhart, Kenneth. Uh -huh. Kenny Lockhart. Kenneth, no, 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 not Kenny. Kenneth Lockhart. Oh, okay, Kenneth. Okay. He was, he was, a, a, I mean, a great captain. Okay. Yeah, Kenneth. I mean, he was man. sharp. He was, you know, yeah. he was smart. Okay. Then you had Raphael Monroe. Mm -hmm. Right. As you're going up, you got Raphael Monroe and his son Edwin Monroe. Then you had uh, the yeah. Wilson. James. Had, uh -huh. Wilson. And you're going up. James and John. No, that's a wash. Miss yeah. Lean. Then you meet uh, Miss Lean. You mean you're talking about John? Then John uh, and I Wallace. Hi, <laughs> but Wallace. Fred Bridgewater. Uh -huh. Which is a great build. Belandro Bridgewater. Then you got the Heaven. Austin Heaven. He's a wireless operator. Mm -hmm. Then you go up, you got uh, Leonard and Hazel. Leonard and, and yeah, Leonard Wallace. Okay. Then Jonathan Lockett, which is my dad is uncle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you got it down in the porn side. You got Mr. Helburn, Lanza Helburn. Okay. Then you got the Mabel Panza. Then you got my aunt Ada. Mm -hmm. My aunt Mumada. Um, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's our that's that's aunt, my daddy aunt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then you're going up there and you meet uh, the Lockhart, uh -huh. that was uh -huh. Uncle Granville. Stop, stop right by the Lockhart. We, we can take a station break <laughs> for the news and we come back. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the beauty of Ragged oh, Island. Yeah. After uh -huh. we come back from the break, oh. telling me it's going to be none other than Miss yeah, Miss Spa, Pintad Monroe. Uh, the, she's a wonderful educator. She's been energized. She's been calling people all around the country to make sure they watch the show. You've turned into the rec talk. I'm your host, David G. member must do his or her part in the race. If one member drops the baton, it impacts all of us. Across all ages, genders, abilities, nationalities, cultures, or religion, we are all on the same team, and we all have a role to play in getting to the finish line to win the race against COVID-19. Don't drop the baton on safety. Wear your mask over your mouth and nose. Keep at least three feet distance from others do not touch your face, and wash or sanitize your hands often. Together, we will win.
Serena's community page now has its own home on channel 230. Be sure to tune into this channel to see informative notices, funeral announcements, birthday greetings, and much, much more. So watch the ZNS Community Channel today on Cable 230. We play just like your kids. We text just like your kids. We learn. We even cook. We take selfies. We have hobbies. And we love sports. In every way, we are just like everyone else and enjoy the same things and live our lives every day, just like you do. So if you happen to meet us, treat us just like everyone else. Because at the end of the day, we're just like you. Living life with Down syndrome is simply living. To learn more about Down syndrome, call 727-2105. This message is brought to you by the Grand Bahama Down Syndrome Society. Bottling for bay is a joke compared to bottling colon cancer. You want to protect your quarterback? You need to protect your body. Hi. The same way we declare that we will be victorious on Bay Street, it's the same way you will declare that you will be victorious over colon cancer. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer affecting Bahamians. Both men and women are affected equally. Fortunately, colon cancer can be prevented by scheduling routine visits with your doctor, by being aware of the symptoms, and by having some form of colon cancer screening when appropriate. If you're over the age of 45, talk to your doctor about having a colonoscopy today so that you can avoid a conversation about colon cancer tomorrow. As long as we've been a country, these islands have been a favorite for royalty. And for as long as the royals have adored us as a people, we've always been hospitable and gracious hosts. From a colony to a nation, now on the cusps of its golden anniversary, these shores have celebrated royal visits with class and dignity that is wholly Bahamian. As Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth celebrates her platinum anniversary on the throne, the islands of the Bahamas welcomes the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge on this, their first visit to the country. Our coverage starts Thursday, March 24th at 4 p.m. and continues through their departure Saturday, March 26th. The ZNS Network, your home for the royal visit, William and Kate. Public Service Announcement is brought to you by the Communications Section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training in conjunction with this channel. Log on and stay on. As parents, we will not always be present while our children engage in online learning. Ensure that your child is getting the most from the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training's Learning Management System. Here are some tips to help you establish your child's online learning routine. Number one, designate a workspace to reduce distraction. The bed is not recommended. Number two, each morning ensure your child is alert and devices are ready to log on. Number three, periodically check in on your child by calling texting, or FaceTiming to ensure that they are participating in their online classes. Number four, communicate with your child's teachers to stay updated on your child's progress and online attendance. Number five, remember, it takes a village to raise a child, so you can create a WhatsApp or other social media group with parents to share relevant information pertaining to your child's online education. Education is important. Log on and stay on. This public service announcement was brought to you by the Communications Section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training in conjunction with this channel. 
During this World Diabetes Awareness Day, the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Pan American Health Organization and the World Health Organization wants to advise you that to lower your chance of getting high blood pressure and diabetes, here are some things you can do. Eat healthier foods such as fruits and vegetables. Exercise for 30 minutes a day, four times per week. Get to your ideal body weight. Cut back on the amount of alcohol you consume and stop smoking. If you have already been diagnosed with diabetes, take care of yourself. Make sure that you have a blood sugar monitoring machine at home. If you need one, visit the nearest public health clinic. Talk to your health care provider today about how you can live a longer and healthier life with or without diabetes. Remember, your health is in your hands. This message is brought to you by AHO WHO, Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and the Healthy Bahamas Coalition. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Direct Talk. I'm your host, David G. Been joined by the Energizer Bunny now. We're talking about the beauty of Regan Island. Joining me now is Ms. Mispa Pintad Monroe. Welcome to Direct Talk, Ms. Mispa. Thank you very much, sir. Thank Tell us, you. Who is Mispa? Where she was born? Who she was born to? Where she grew up? I was born at Duncan Town, Riot Island, the 14th of April, 1953, to Ver Veronica Marita Lockhart Pintad and Louis Wilberforce Pintard. I'm the third of 11 children. Wow, come on, name, name all of them. Who's oh. the first one? Oh, John Harvey Arnold Pintard, deceased, Prieta, Pintard Burnside, myself, Anatole Pintard Rigby, Louis Pintard Jr., Arturo Lester Pintard, Cleo Veronica Pintard, Sid Cherise Pintard Ward, and Cleo was a rule, and Sophia Pintard Harden, and Martin Luther Pintard, Henry Duran Robert Pintard. Wow. Mommy yeah. just passed away. Yes, mom just passed. Let's remember her name. What was mom's name? Veronica Marita Lockhart Pintard. Uh, and, she and was 92 years old. And she passed. Amen. And yeah. so you would have grown up in Ragged Island? Yes, sir. Born and bred. Who would have what school did you go to? Duncan Town All Age School. Yeah. And we had an excellent slate of teachers, foreign teachers and native teachers. But prominent in my time were Mr. Goodrich, Lloyd Goodrich, and Mr. Benjamin Thomas, who is now retired and living in San Salvador. And I know he's listening. Hello, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> and then you had a money school. Money school was the kindergarten. What's up, talking? Y'all had kindergarten. Man, when the, uh, the Bahamas just talking about how early we should preschool. send children to school, uh -huh. preschool, we had that Gramps is 99 in a few days, and Gramps went to money school. So that tells you Amanda Wallace was educating Ragged Islanders for over 100 years. How old you had to be to go to money school? Once you could walk and your, your siblings could hold your hand, you could behave because money kept the tamarin switch close. You could go to money school. And at money school, you learned your ABCs, you signed that. You learned your, your numerals, even the Roman numerals. You learned the books of the Bible. You learned little um, memory verses and songs. We learned the two timetable. We learned how to sing that at money school. Wow. So by the time we entered day school at age five, the teachers didn't have to teach us those things. So we had to jump way ahead of the rest of the Bahamas for many generations. That's how come Ragged Islanders are so educated. Yeah. They've produced many doctors, the likes mm -hmm. of a doctor, Dr. Luxley Monroe, David Monroe, Mitchell Lockhart, Devon Curlin, Charlie Lockhart, Dr. Justin Pintard. Dr. Cyril Lee Thompson, Dr. Freeman Lockhart, Dr. Margot Monroe, Dr. Mercyne Moxie, Dr. Mercyana Moxie, Dr. Beaver, Beaverton Moxie, Dr. Yes. Gabrielle McKinney, Dr. Marlon Moxie, Dr. Alina Chipman Lees, Dr. Loma Monroe, Dr. Ty Johnson, Dr. Keto Bridgewater, Dr. Kenville Lockhart, mm -hmm. Dr. Durbin Johnson, Dr. Elkisha Curlin, Dr. Mm -hmm. Shining 
Carrie Bullard, Shanna Ray, Shanna Ray, nice Lydia Curlin, Phoebe Moxie, Manel Monroe, mm. Burnell Monroe, Federica Ellis, Ivor Ambrister. These are nurses, I guess. Yes. Laurel Poitier, Chantel Dames, um, Adriana mm-hmm. Humes, Carla Monroe, Verdell Monroe Ferguson, Candice Rigby. Where these doctors and nurses come from? Right in Ragged Island? All from that one little rock, Ragged Island. Produce prominent persons in every strata of the society. What was life like growing up? What, what happened when, when somebody died in that community? How people <laughs> used to know? Man, Ragged Island had a, a well-organized um, community. When someone passed, the news was sent to the person who rang the, the church bells. You had the big Baptist church, you had Ebenezer Baptist church, you had oh, Holy yeah. Innocence so, Anglican church. Are there two churches there? We had mm-hmm. four churches. We also had the Church of God of Prophecy, the Jumper Church, mm-hmm. and we had the Gospel, Gospel Hall. Hall. Okay. But these were the prominent churches now with the bells. Right. The Anglican Church, Holy Innocence Anglican Church, and Ebenezer Baptist oh, Church. Sure. Ebenezer Baptist Church had the biggest <laughs> bell. I thought that bell, I mean, when, when you rang that and you were inside that building, your body shook. Wow. So the but whole island could hear the bell? Everyone. If you went out on the outskirts for, for tops of the fishing, and someone passed, you would know that before you came into the, into the settlement because they had a, a code. If it was a man who died, the bell would ring three times, M-A-N, wow. and stop. And if that man was 80 years old, then the bell would go one, two, wow. three, 80, 80 and times. 80 times. If it was a woman, the same thing went. W O M A N stop. Then they would do the age. So you could be any place out of the settlement and you would know that we had a female or a male pass and whether it was an old person or a young person. Now when there was a fire, uh-huh. those bells just went clang, 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 clang. And everybody had to run with their buckets. Grab your bucket. some water. Because, you know, water is a problem all the time in Ragged Island. But we never had many fires. Who would have been some of the neighbors who lived next to you as a child growing up? Oh. We were talking um, before we went to the break. We had stopped by the Lockhart's. Well, our house was opposite the commissioner's residence. So it you're, like been... commis- you're like a commissioner, too? Oh, yeah, that was the port of entry. So they had a commissioner. We had C.G. Archer. We had Mr. Barrow. We had lots of, of commissioners. Mr. M- Mr. Munro can tell you some of the, the earlier ones, but we had commissioners resident. Who would have been some of the commissioners when you would have been there growing up? When I was growing up, you, know, you had uh, Mr. Ryan. Mm-hmm. And before that, you had uh, Mr. Coover. Calma. Mr. Calma. Yes. Uh, R.H. Calma. R.H. Calma, Dr. Calma's father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was commissioned in regular. So you all used to clear boats. You all, you all yeah. thought it was a port yeah, entry. Yeah. Regular entry, was a port yes, entry because yes. you know you had the trade between Cuba and Haiti, and that's the great result. We used to come in the regular island to enter, the commissioner and the tide reader come board, and they check the boat out. Value. And give you a clearance to proceed to Nassau. Because mm-hmm. you can go to Nassau unless you clear customs no, first you, in the regular you island. To. When you get to Nassau, you gotta Should produce your transire. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I didn't pay duty on these items. Yes, That's yes, right. yes. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you pay your duty on Ragged Island, and Ragged Island used to generate a lot of revenue, revenue. For, the revenue. for the government. More than yeah. any other island in, in the, the Bahamas. Bahamas. How they used to get the salt to the boats? And who used to, who they used to sell these salt to? What just happened, you know, you had the ponds, the salt pond, and like every family had a pond. Mm-hmm. And your parents, your grandparents, or your mother, they go in the pond and they rake the salt up. And they take the soil with shovel, and you put it on on on, on the dam, which you call you know you know the thing you call the dam, like a little road on the on the head of the pond and on the side. Mm-hmm. So you dip the pond, the soil up, and you with the shovel and you put it on the dam. Okay. So the water that, that water run out and run Free back in the pond. Yes. Okay. So when the soil dry out some, that's where we come in in the children. Mm-hmm. That's cool out. Totem time. You gotta go tote soil. Don't let one little squall. A real old back pond. <laughs> you got to run. Because you got you can touch so, and you, all the soil were there on the dam. Okay, move. They got to move and go up. See, they have a place 
up on the high ground with the foundation. and they build a foundation. Mm -hmm. Get there's some stones and build around it. Then they mud that down with some stuff they take with the pond. Uh -huh. Fresh and that that uh, mm -hmm. get hard and you mm -hmm. put the salt on that. And when you don't get when you get a sight the more the salt on the heap, then the man you gotta go to the key in the sailboat in this the sea in the boat like the courageous down. Uh -huh. You go to the key and you cut the top, the the leaf to touch the soil, so when rain come, it wouldn't waste it. Mm -hmm. Wow, I saw a picture so, up there where they had with the, yes. with the, with the leaf on, now, on top of the soil. When, yes. when, when wow. time to ship the soil, you towed you, you tow the soil from the pond side on your head now in basket, in, in basket down to the landing. No car. No, okay. on your head now. <laughs> come now, you got to tow it up to 12 tons. Uh, you go, 12 tons? 12 tons. 12, no, I mean 12 baskets. You call it ton. Okay, okay. And your, your grandparents are there, can be ready, and you gonna, they can tell you you can walk as slow as you like. You can carry that amount of salt in the landing. Mm -hmm. Then you got to have your bucket there. Then you finish stone salt, go get and carry a bucket of water home. Now, how the soil used to get from the landing, you got to take the soil, got to take the soil in basket. They have a a tub with a measuring, a measuring bucket. Okay. Bushel. Mm -hmm. where, where, where it's called bushel and half bushel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you put that in the basket and then you put it in the boat and you, you put it in the, in the 16 feet boat and you take it out to the cut where the, where the, the larger vessel is. So that's why the man used to have to work hard. Then you got to take that soil out of the boat and put it, and put put it back on the, on, on the, the, bigger, boat. On yes. the bigger boat. So where these bigger boats came from, uh, man? Some of those soil vessels used to come from all the boats, from Canada, Halifax, Halifax mm -hmm. on all of them. Sometimes I have two and three of them scunners, them, them uh, soil vessels in the cut, getting sold. And the boats, those boats just ought to be, see, that's why right on those boats build shallow for going in and out the channel. Because, uh, you know, the, 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 the harbor is, is shallow. It was, yeah, it wasn't dredged. You, know, you, you, was only had no, you only had no machine coming to dredge. No, 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 no. Dynamite. And you know what we used to do, too? Mm -hmm. Some parts of the channel used to be shallow or, or full up. The men with the low tide used to take the little dinghy boat with the shovel, go there and dip the soil up, put the dinghy boat and carry it off the, the lee shore or somewhere and dump it out. That's like how we used to survive around here. So, uh, who who they paid for the salt? Mm -hmm. When when the big boats came in to, to to get the salt, who did they pay for it? Well, what happened? I think they used to, you know, the commission oil bodies to be in wall. Okay. And they used to come and say how much salt they want. Then they'll go to each family, and give them a certain amount of bushel mm -hmm. of salt to take to the to the to the, to the salt vessel. Mm -hmm. And then as you carry your name, go down how much how much salt go to the salt vessel. Then, when, you, when the, the, the ship get loaded, then the, the, the captain, or that's how the grand used to go to Cuba or Haiti, you go with, with your money and you give it to the agent. You know, you give it to the agent and the agent charge you for what you get, because like a bunch of banana, you got six, you got six on, seven on, eight on, nine on, and that's like how you pay for those things. You, you pay like 50 cent, 75 cent for a bunch of banana. Well, you, you, could, you could get a bunch of banana in those days for like 70 cent, 80 cent. Now, we're not going back at that V on the salt business now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the guy who used to carry those salt out. And before my time, because I was a young boy then, you know, grow, so, growing up. So you all had a way of surviving before when the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ray Allen had a way of surviving from yeah. before, before I born. I mm -hmm. saw some pictures up there where you all used to go to Cuba, dress right up. I mean, dress everybody, right That's the right. whole family going out of Cuba. Yes, oh, yeah. Yes, they, yes. they had friends in Cuba, and they did their vacation. They took all the children. Let me give you... When I was, like, when I was a cook on the boat, you know, we had... Two or three of them. You didn't know the people in Cuba, in Samar, that's like how we know one another here in Nassau. Mm -hmm. It was like a family. Okay, okay. Tell some of the little Cuban boys when, when we did, uh, they used to bring wood for us and they helped load the boat. Tell some of the, of the boys, them give some of the little, some of the men who owned the boat, give some of the boys, them a little job 
to come on the boat to, to wait. You get really could get something. Yeah. So one of the Cuban boys, when we get in in Samar, tell them, see, I can make Johnny K good. <laughs> 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 no. That's me, I get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You gotta make Johnny Cake. I gotta make Johnny Cake. Mm -hmm. I gotta go, I gotta go to the boat, get the, we have, we have a tray that would be built or we make to need the Johnny Cake in. Then I gotta get the flour, get the flesh, the, the baking, baking powder, powder mm -hmm. and a little bit of salt with the tray. And I go, I go on shore now. I go, I gotta go shore to do that. We get in the yard. Build the guy we just do get the, 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 the tree rock, mm -hmm. get the wood, fix right. it. Get the get, I carry the oven from board the boat, the, the tin sheet leg what we just put on the oven to bake the bread. Uh -huh. And then I need that bread. I need that Johnny cake. I need that Johnny cake. Then I didn't need that Johnny. Put the let's you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Put the the, the tin sheet on top of that. Mm -hmm. Take put a little bit of little coal sand on top of, on the top of that. Mm -hmm. We're doing bind. Yes. Then you put your little wood on top of that, and that bread brown. I mean, so good Pretty. they call it a whole cake. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, mm -hmm. and man, when that bread finish, it looks so good. <laughs> and we drink coffee all night. Mm -hmm. Then I get a certificate for that. Mm -hmm. For needing wow. Johnny cake and <laughs> in then, Cuba. And then David. <laughs> The Ragged Islanders never came to Nassau to the doctor or to shop. Where did they go? They went to Cuba. Yeah. Havana was the shopping center of the world then, this part of the world, and there were other settlements in Cuba. Well, where we used to go in Samar, mm -hmm. we had a, a place you call a town, you call Banas. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where we used to drive in the bus. From Samar to Banas to shop. Mm -hmm. and listen, I know the only thing I used to buy in Nassau used to be shoes, because when my foot broad, <laughs> and the Cuban shoes is more tighter, it's more tighter. Yeah, tighter. yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to buy uh, but shirt, cap, everything in Cuba, everything. And talking about perfume, tabun, eh? How y'all used to know when the boat was coming back from Cuba? How y'all used to cry out? Oh, you See, always had people looking out. And you would only hear someone's, they saw a little speck of white, look like a boat sail. If the boat was coming from Haiti, it would come from what we call the north, the north side. side. Okay. If it was coming from Cuba, it would come from over in the west. <laughs> and you would hear a little herald on the island say, sail on north side. And then someone else will pick up that sound further down along. You'll hear, sail on north side, until everyone knew. So y'all passed the message? Yes. Wow. Everyone knew that a boat was coming. It was in sight, we say, boat in sight. We can go to the station break. I want to mention some of the religious leaders who've come out of Ragged Island. Catechist Cur Ellis Curlin. Catechist Ignatius Ignatius Wallace. Mm -hmm. Leroy Arthur Maycock. John Wesley Ferguson. Theodore Wilson. Stephen Ambrister. Demerson Nesbitt. Hercules Maycock. Enriquez. En Enriquez Maycock, Raphael Monroe, Bertram Monroe, Trent Davis, Scott Rigby, Rick. Harvey Lockhart, Dr. Miles Monroe, Ruth Ann Monroe, mm. Sheena Lockhart Pinder, Matthias Monroe, Ethian Boleg, Anne Grant, and Eileen Thompson. Wow, you turned into director. Marlon Marlin Marlin Corley. Marlon Corley, yes. dad. Yeah. And Amanda Curlin says her grandfather, Ellis Curlin, was a commissioner, and he served as catechist at Holy Innocent for over 50 years. Yes. You're the direct talk. I'm your host, David G. One of the biggest challenges I face as a teen mother is support throughout the community. Instead of the community trying to uplift teen mothers, they insist on bringing us down and trying to tear down our self-esteem. Becoming a teen mother, It helps me to focus on my decisions because I need not to decide for myself anymore. I have to make decisions for me and my daughter. In my opinion, seeking health services was excellent for me. Honestly, my biggest support, other than the nurses, was my Grammy. The advice that I give to other teens out there is to stay focused on your education. Stay focused on your self goals, set goals for yourself.
Marine Lighthouse on San Salvador to let you know that marine protected areas make dollars and cents. A well-designed and managed network of protected areas can generate income for nearby communities. From MPA managers to lodges to eco tours, there is money to be made. Healthy marine ecosystems help to protect our islands from climate change and other impacts that we cannot control. Healthy coral reefs help to break down big waves and mangroves absorb storm surge and help to protect our coastline. Older and larger fish tend to carry more and healthier eggs than younger fish. Fish replenishment areas will allow fish to grow bigger and ensure that we have more fish now and in the future. In our replenishment area, fish are free to grow and reproduce. As their populations increase, more fish will spill over into other areas where fishermen can increase their catch and their income. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island, and you should too. And you should too. And you should too. And you should too. See, See the, the future, future with, with Bahamas, Bahamas Protected. protected. Welcome back to Direct Talk. I'm your host, David G. Today we're talking about the beauty of Ragged Island. Tomorrow, join us. We're going to talk about the story of a Ragged Island boy, Mark Wilson, former principal, former director of education, former permanent secretary. We're going to take two hours to talk about his journey. And then on Thursday, go back to Grand Bahama. Uh, first segment, we're going to have, uh, as we get ready to celebrate with the credit unions, uh, the topic for that show is Cooperative on the Move. Joining me is going to be Miss Pauline Burroughs and Miss Linnell Curry. We're going to be talking about the Grand Bahama Cooperative Credit Union. And then at 12 noon, Bishop Michael Eldon School is going to be in the studio. I love you, Lord. Uh, I've asked Miss Cheryl Woods. They were supposed to come on on Friday. I had to move them to Thursday. On Friday, we're going to be talking about the journey of a farmer's key boy part two. Dean Harry Bain is going to be back with us in Freeport. We're going to talk about his service to Christ the King Anglican Church. Uh, he's also served as principal of Freeport Anglican High School, now Bishop Michael Allen School, and he's now chairman of the Anglican Central Education Authority. He's going to be my guest on Friday after the press conference. On Monday, Cooperative on the Move next week, Teachers Salary Union, National Workers Union, one Elutra, Bahamas Law, Public Workers Cooperative Union. We're going to be talking about them with them on Monday. And then on Tuesday, from Roses to Mount Frith Williams, joining me is going to be Dame Ivy L. Dumont, Governor General Retired from Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We're going to talk about this lady from Long Island and her wonderful journey rising to the post of Governor General. And then on Wednesday, celebrating Glaucoma Awareness Week. Um, we're going to be joined by Dr. Charlene Wallace and Nurse Italia Gordon. We're going to be talking about glaucoma, the thief of sight. And then we get to Freeport on the 24th, remembering the sea safe lanes. Joining me is going to be Monique Leary. My Uncle Clarence Wallace is going to join us in the studio. Been bowling for some 50-plus years, probably. We're going to talk about the Monday night bitter set and 
Tuesday night mixes and the Wednesday morning coffee league and the Wednesday night early bird and the Thursday night businessman's league. We're going to talk about the ABC tournament and the tournaments that would have been held uh, at the Village Lanes. One day I'm going to do a show on the Village Lanes. And then on Friday of next week, remembering the life and legacy of Mr. Alveston Edwards. I'm going to talk about this great builder whose father would have founded the Adastra Gardens uh, and he's come to, went to Freeport. Left a great legacy. Talk about his journey. Joining me now in studio, um, two of Ragged Island finest, um, <laughs> daughter and son, um, Emmett Monroe, best captain ever sailed the sea. Who were some of the captains who would have, you could remember, who would have sailed out of Ragged Island? Get in trouble right now. Call them <laughs> some names. No, I can get in trouble because I wish I remember. <laughs> no, I can remember. Okay, I can start from my father. Uh huh. Oscar Taylor Monroe Jr., uh, Jr. Senior. Okay. Then you had Kenneth Lockhart. Okay. You had Enriquez Magog. Okay. Then you go up, you have Raphael Monroe. Okay. Then you have his son, Chayden Monroe. Uh -huh. His son, Edwin Monroe. Uh -huh. Then you go up, you had Morris Wallace. Uh -huh. Then you go up, you had uh, Alonzo Hellboy. Uh -huh. Then you go up, you had uh, jo uh, John Pintard, uh -huh. Louis Pintard. Mm. Then you had Edwin Wallace. Uh -huh. You had Christopher Wallace. Uh -huh. Livingston Wallace. Uh -huh. I already said Morris, right? Yes. Morris, Morris Wallace. And you go up, I didn't say Louis Pintard, yes. John well, Pintard. Still go up the back road and then come around. Then you had <laughs> <laughs> Leonard, Leonard Wallace. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then you go up, you had Ricardo Curling. Uh -huh. That's his father. Okay. Then you had Halton Lockhart. Mm -hmm. You had Captain Horace Wilson. He was one of the great captains from around Reggae Island, yes. boat builders. Yes. yes. Then you had Lorenzo Lockhart. Uh-huh. You had Norris Wallace. Uh-huh. Ellis Curlin. Uh-huh. Then you had uh, Demerson uh, Nesbitt. Okay. Nehemiah. Nehemiah Maycock. Mm-hmm. Nehemiah Maycock. You had Stephen and Bristol. Mm-hmm. And you had like Leiden and Bristol. Mm-hmm. Then you had... Uh, Ed Moxie. Edgar Moxie, mm -hmm. a great captain, a great, a famous boat builder, uh -huh. built a lot of uh, boats and sailing boat like the Courageous, the Good News, the Pieces of Eight. Captain Moxie. He was, he was, uh, the Captain Moxie. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was a strong, hard-working man. You got to give him that. Mm -hmm. And plenty of time, you know, people like them just be forgotten. But he is one of the the, the captain and boat builders in the Bahamas should have get good recognition. Yeah. Because very few men build boats like him. T time to name one of the Defense Force vessels after people like him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You uh, know, he, and, the, and the three captains who sailed the Defense Force boats to stop them from breaking up are three captains. We had Anton Lockhart, uh -huh. Hezron Moxie, and Edwin Monroe. Okay. And Chayden Monroe. Chayden Monroe. Yeah. That's Four, right. of them. Four of them. And then you also mentioned that when the Defense Force had the tragedy, that yes. it would have been because of um, some of the two. two of the Ragged Island boys who was yes. on the boat. Eh? Talk Le about Leo it. Leo Kirby and John Wallace. Hadn't those two men been on those boats, on that boat, we would not have heard the story at all, maybe, because they knew the country roads. They knew where to sailed the Cuban boat that they survived on so that they got to the, to the southern part of the island and they knew the country roads where they could lead the whole crew into the settlements, into safety. Because the next morning, the Cuban helicopter had landed on the airstrip and were there looking for them in the bushes. But because of those two, two young men, Leo Kirby and John Wallace, they were saved. They were able to get into the settlement and make an alight, an alarm for us to get help. Wow. Some of the captains I see include uh, uh, Boisel Moxie. 
Yeah. I, I know. I see Tycoon here as well, Ed Kalen. Mm-hmm. Emmett, well, you know, Emmett and Sean Monroe goes without saying, yeah, and Jed I, Monroe. Yeah, Sean, uh, Jed. I see in the blood. A, 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 Ethian Maycock. Yeah, I see Eugene Monroe. Eugene. Um, Lee Umbrister. Lee Umbrister. Yeah, uh, Horace and Lockhart. Sir, Cyril Joffa. Uh, Cyril Joffa, name is here. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Kingsley. Kingsley Wilson. 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 Uh, Dominic Wright. You know. Dave. Kingsley, Kingsley Wilson and... Cyril Joffa, we all sail on the same boat together. Wow, wow. Uh, Lyndon Moxie, Andy Moxie, yes. Leander Moxie, yeah. Hez, well, Hez when you call, Moxie Senior and Junior, yeah. Leland Curlin, deceased, Carlton Lockhart, Carlton Lockhart. Mm-hmm. Glenn Hebbin, Yes. Pablo Moxie, uh, Paul, Paul Moxie, um, Paul Moxie Junior, Harry Lockhart, and Maya Maycock, uh, Gerard Moxie, uh, Joey Moxie, um, uh, and uh, Liam Bristol and Horace Lockhart. Wow. And Edwin, uh, Vivian Lockhart was a good one. Was a good man too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Good boat builder. Too. Yes. And he's a good captain. Smart then, young man. Oh, and then Ragged Island produced even a movie star. Yes. Man, stop talking foolishness. Calvin Lockhart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Finer son. That's mm-hmm. Connie's good brother. <coughs> yeah. I'm talking about the, the boats. Vernon Lockhart, <coughs> who is the brother of who is the son of Eugenia Lockhart, <coughs> who, who went to England in the women's suffrage movement. Mm-hmm. Vernon Lockhart built the boat that came first in the first family island regatta. He built a ragged gal, and they sailed, they sailed from Ragged Island to Exuma, and they won the first regatta. But when they searched the boat for an engine, because it was so far ahead of the other boats, they disqualified it with a flimsy excuse that it wasn't built to this specification on the next. <laughs> but I watch my aunts, my two tomboys aunts, Florinda and Sheila, uh-huh. I watch them leave up along London uh-huh. with Vernon and they sailed to Georgetown. They won that first race in the first family island regatta. Wow. They, they, they probably thought they had an engine highland yeah. and needed. That's how fast, so how fast, fast. But he built that he built that boat in the land and then we had a luncheon. Now that was an exciting time on the island. Um, boat I, luncheon. I got I got a text from my good boy um, Stanley Simmons, Freeport High School class of I think he would have been seventy three. He said, David, my grandma was Ethel Monroe, and I had a popular uncle in Nassau named Shorty Monroe, but his name was Alfred. They could have also had some Ragged Island ties. You know anybody from Ragged Island with those names? Absolutely. And Cleveland Duncan says, good morning, my brother. Please be advised that I am with Mr. Ernie Wallace, Ragged Island Extraordinaire. <laughs> yes. And say, hey, you were tired and were found guilty for not having him on the show. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, Ernie, we can do show in Freeport. Mm-hmm. Kenny Lockhart, yourself, Mrs. Victoria, right in there. We got a... Yes. They have, a, they have a, a powerful association in Grand Mama, just yes. like you have an association here, headed up by Amanda Curlin. Yes. Talk about the association you have here in, in, Ragged, in, in Nassau. The Ragged Island Association, we um, raise funds to help with improving the island, and they have a fest, a festival that is held in July around Independence Time. Um, most of the years, well, with the pandemic, they weren't able to operate, but that's a fun time in Ragged Island. And you've produced some of the cultural king and queens of this country, Kayla Lockhart Edwards, yep. Naomi Lockhart, Willis Knowles. Hamish Moxie, Edmund Moxie, Kishan Monroe, Matthew Wild Goose, David Wallace, who mm-hmm. that is, Ooh. Michael Pintard, one of the great playwrights, mm-hmm. um, Therese Davis Nixon, Miss Daisy, Daisy, descend from Ragged Island. Oh, yes, Altair's, Altair's a mom, Altair Davis. That's a mom. Percy Wallace and Miss Pintard Monroe. Yes. Wow. Tell us about um, how you all used to launch this boat before <laughs> we end this program today. Because yeah. they used to, where used to build this boat? And the I, boats I used to, were built way up in the land. In the place you call the little ship, you had freight ship, freight ship landing, mm-hmm. and the boat used to build on the, on the, on the, on the dry land, mm-hmm. no water. So when the boat complete, they would, would jack the boat up, Mm-hmm. They would jog the boat up and put some Horse rope. some uh, mm-hmm. some uh, pole, lo- you know, log okay. underneath the keel, okay. and under the bilge and your runner. You had a great big anchor 
or something and put it out in the harbor uh-huh. and run and get a, 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 a block and take out. Attach that to the anchor and bring it and attach it to the vessel. And you got a, a group of, of people, men and women, you call that a launcher. Mm-hmm. And, uh-huh. Sorry, let's, let's hold up. Hold up in front of you. Hold up in front of you. Yeah, go ahead. Keep going. Uh-huh. Let's keep holding. Hold up, John. Let's hold up, John. Uh-huh. Yeah, Just keep holding. Yeah. And they, uh... The group of men and women that get together, and they'll keep a pull in. They hear, who say the boat must go? Then they say, this one say the boat must go. <laughs> yeah, and they'll pull in. So and they pull in. Pull. And you're inching and inching. Pull. <laughs> and each end until the boat gets to the water. Mm-hmm. Then when the boat gets in the water, the boat float, and you carry it where you want to take it. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so tell me, Miss, you was responsible for pulling one of them boats? Oh, yeah, the Captain Moxie. Uh-huh. Boy, that did look like Noah's Ark when, when Edgar Moxie was building that big boat <laughs> in the landing, up on dry land. And it feels like he took eternity, but it was finished. And every child who wanted to participate we went and we I pulled on that. We That's pulled right. on that that big horse of rope, this one. This one. Uh-huh. like they said, like like Captain Monroe said, who said the boat must go? And Edgar said the boat <laughs> must go. <laughs> who said the boat must go? Edgar said the boat must go. And sometimes we would put his wife's name. Uh-huh. Amos said the boat must go, and that that gave you some energy to pull. And then you know, mm-hmm. and the whole community came and helped. Yes, yes. the whole community came, mm-hmm. and you know, all the time when you got luncheon. You got everybody baking cake and mm-hmm. biscuit, and then you got this uh, lemonade and sugar, brown sugar. And, and, yeah, and mm-hmm. again you got that little dulce relish, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you know you get fire up, mm-hmm. and you just go to town. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that would have been a big day. Big day. Big day. Launching day. That's right. I see you've bought some wonderful things to put on display. Let's talk about the culture and y'all oh. being here. Y'all is plat. Y'all love a platin in, in Ragged Island. Eh? Oh yes, and this is a this is a special type of mat. This one is actually eight by ten feet. Okay. And if you look carefully, these straws, the plat, they are knitted together, but not stitched on a sewing machine. Okay. We use what is called a loom or a mat frame. And you go over that frame and you attach these layers of panels of plat uh-huh. with straw and a big needle that the straw vendors would use. And then you bind it. But this is unique to Ragged Island. This is a cultural thing that no other island in the Bahamas do their straw in this manner. Wow. No sewing machine is used here. It is all done by hand. Then we have the fana. We, that comes from the silver top. We have baskets. And all the straw work is made from silver top. Ragged Island people never use much coconut straw because the coconut straw is much rotten, more soft and rotten. Okay, okay. We use the silver top. Where do you get the silver top from? It grows, yeah. it grows in Ragged Island? Yes, it grows in Ragged mm-hmm. Island. But most of them we went to the Keys, like Raccoon Key. Okay. You would find ladies and some of the men would go and they would spend the whole day collecting silver tops. They would sail in the, in the sailing boats. And when they came back, you would put the silver tops out in the sun to dry. And after they were dry, then we would strip them and plait them into whatever size plaits that they wanted. And the plaits were measured by the fathom. And that was our pastime. From children, we were taught how to plait different size of plat. You start out with five strings, seven strings, 11 strings, until you could do 32 strings, 36 strings, whatever. Wow. That was our pastime. We had no TV. The only thing we had was radio. You listened to Bone Air Radio in the night. <laughs> and you knew all those songs. That was our pastime, <laughs> platting. And we, we would have race, a race to see who would plat the most fathom of plat okay. in, 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 in one session. I have my sponsor, Bahamas Air, out there. We're going to wrap up with them, so I'm going to give you all a chance to, to wrap up. Uh, i got to have you all back, though, uh, I, because I know I have to do something with Ed Curlin. I also have to do something with Bishop, who I, uh, who I wanted to come in this morning to... Bishop John Ferguson. Yeah, yes. to, 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 to pray. Um, so i got to do something with Bishop John Ferguson. Uh, I guess um, Tycoon, we could do a show with Tycoon by himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Closing comments, Emmett. One, you know, one thing I would like to say... 
Rugged Island is my home, where I born and grow. Everything I know, that's where I learn. Learn it from Rugged Island. I travel through the land and breadth of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, helping build up these islands, road, carrying stuff on the boat, on the barges, building road, airport, and everything. I even built a house in Long Island. My father house on Ragged Island, well, it destroyed. And I started to, well, I wanted to put the roof on it, but the bell cost was so weak, I couldn't put it out, it knocked the whole thing down. Now my intention is my last couple of years or days. No, you, or, got, many, you got many years. Or whatever. I then started to build a home on Ragged Island. And I hope the next time you come down there, Mr. Wallace, you'll be able to see my home, like what I built. Because I'm proud of Ragged Island, and I want to see Ragged Island move a little bit. I can build a house here for people to see on the Nova, that's Emmett Monroe, a native of Ragged Island. Yes. That's his home. Amen. And I love Ragged Island better than any island in the Bahamas. Amen. You only come to Nassau for real life. Yeah, that's Ooh, all. That's I, a, I, 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 rather, I rather spend my last couple of days or a couple of years on Ragged Island. Man, look here. Young as you look, you can be around for a long time. <laughs> How old are you now? Right now, mm, I'm 82. Every, everything's still working? My, bu <laughs> <laughs> my birthday will make me 83. Uh -huh. July coming. Amen. God bless. God spare my life. I want to salute you for all the countries, the, the impact y'all have made in moving this country ahead. You know, without the boat builders and without the sailors, that's the only way you can link this country, either by air or by sea. Yes. Because we can't link it by train. Um, mm. So we want to thank you for the contribution you've made to building this country. Thank you very much. I appreciate Closing it. comments, Ms. Wa? Yes. Our school song and our national anthem for Ragged Island says, Oh, there's a lovely island in the blue Bahamian Sea. An island full of coconuts and fine old tamarind trees. An island where the cedar trees are waving in the breeze. Ragged Island is its name. We are out to build a new Ragged Island. We are out to build a new Ragged Island. We are out to build a new Ragged Island. This group of pioneers. You gotta sing that song before you leave, though. You know, you have Ragged Island got their own song and all. Yes. I, I was I was quite pleased when when you sent that to me. Um, I, I, you got you gotta sing that before we go. I sent you a recording. Yeah, you sent me the recording. No, you can't <laughs> sing it. Uh, we, we we can't play the recording. Um, it was written um, by who? It was written by our principal at the time, Mr. Benjamin Fritz Thomas. Mm -hmm. And from then we have never let it die. Okay, gotta sing. Gotta sing one voice of it. Oh, there's a lovely island in the blue Bohemian Sea. An island full of coconuts and fine old tamarind trees. An island where the cedar trees are waving in the breeze. Ragged Island is its name. We are out to build a new Ragged Island. We are out to build a new Ragged Island. We are out to build a new Ragged Island. This group of pioneers. It's still the director. I'm your host, David G. <laughs> When I had got prostate cancer, my family. The Ministry of Health wishes to advise members of the public that prevention is key during this flu season. Practicing good cough hygiene can make the difference between you and your loved ones getting the flu or spreading the influenza virus. Good cough hygiene habits include covering your mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing and proper disposal of the tissue in a trash bin. Coughing or sneezing into your upper sleeve near your inner elbow and not your hands when a tissue is not available. Avoiding the use of handkerchiefs and towels as they hold germs, becoming a nest for the virus. And frequently washing your hands with soap and water, which is listed as one of the most important steps you can take to avoid getting sick and passing the virus on to others. 
If you have any questions about how to practice good cough hygiene to avoid catching or spreading the flu, contact your nearest community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Abuse. Domestic violence. Suicidal tendencies. Are you being stressed out from these problems? Call the National Hotline at 422-2763 or 322-2763. There are trained social workers available 24 hours to help you. Know that you are not alone in this. Your voice, or that you name Bertram, or that you live down the alley? Grammy, you realize you IDing me right now? Boy, I raise no criminal. If you see what's going down, call Crime Stoppers. They get no personal info. They just give you a PIN number. So how you know so much about them? Hey, you think your uncle get up Fox Hill? You serious? If he won't be can, I able to turn him in. So uncle know you was a snitch? Crime Stoppers ain't never gonna tell nobody. And for top, top info, they just give you cash. <laughs> you get... Paid and all? You eating good, right? The light's still on, eh? Rami! Bite your man up. Stop the crime before it's your time. Well? Call 328 TIPS or from the Family Islands 242 300 TIPS. This public service announcement was brought to you by Crime Stoppers in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Back to Direct Talk. I'm your host, David G, here in the capital city of Nassau. Flew in today, this morning, Bahamas Air. Got to send a shout out to my girls in Freeport. Um, Willemay Moxie Stewart. Well, she sent Willemay Stewart. I say Willemay Moxie Stewart. I didn't give them their full name. <laughs> Patricia Lightburn. And they were there this morning. I flew back yesterday evening on time. 425 flight left at 424. Um, over the last Seven months, so I'm mean, flying here for the show, only once has Bahamas Air been late. I think that is remarkable. Um, and so as we join with my wonderful sponsor, first person to join me uh, as a sponsor, uh, Wilfred Mullings, welcome back. Welcome back home. Pleasure to be here, man. How are you? I see God Happy answers prayer. You bring somebody with you this yes, time. Yes, sir. Happy Tuesday, Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> You're back from Jazz in the Garden? Yes, wonderful weekend. I know. Yeah, wonderful weekend. Asley Brothers. And we'd like to thank all those patrons who uh, took the opportunity to fly on Bahamas there to have enjoy themselves over there at Jazz in the Gardens. Yes. And now you have with you Khadija Johnson. Welcome to Direct Talk. Good afternoon, Bahamas. It's, it's certainly a pleasure. I kept asking him, who is the lady who is responsible for the frequent flyer program? Tell us a little bit about how long you were at Bahamas Air and about this frequent flyer program was happening. I've been with Bahamas Air 16 years. Okay. And I've been with the frequent flyer program for four years now. Okay. Let's talk about the frequent flyer program. Let's tell, tell the country how they could enroll and why should they be a part of this program. Okay. So for all our customers out there that love to fly Bahamas Air, um, you go right onto the website, www.bahamasair.com, and you would scroll down to the bottom of the page where you see Frequent Flyer and you select Enroll. Once you enroll, you begin earning miles instantly. Um, we presently have, with March Madness, a sign-up bonus of 1,000 miles. So today is the day to go online and enroll. Um, with March Madness, you earn double miles wherever you fly. That's domestic and international. Um, after March Madness, it's a miles-based program where the distance of your flight is the amount of miles you receive. Once okay. you would have accumulated 7,500, you're eligible for a round-trip ticket wherever Bahamas Air fly. Wow. 7,500? Yes. Now you see why I bought her? Uh, you bought it for two reasons. That's right. beautiful. <laughs> uh, she complimented. I mean, you need the help of this studio. I tell you. <laughs> um... What else is new at Bahamas Air? Well, you know, like Khadija uh, said, it is March Madness, and Bahamas Air, we're running some really good uh, stuff for the month of March, like the one bike free and uh, Florida Gateways. And for those persons also uh, flying into the Florida Gateways, uh, for each round trip ticket uh, you purchase into Florida for the month of March, and you must have, you have to, you must 
you have to travel in the month of March. I might, I might add that. You get a $20 uh, off each round trip ticket into the uh, Florida Gateways. And you know, um, we're in the process of uh, getting ready for a busy summer that is ahead of us. And um, we're going to be adding some flights on to a new schedule for certain uh, uh, ports going into Florida. For example, Orlando, we're going to increase the frequency into Orlando twice a day. Uh, West Palm Beach, uh, Marsh Harbor, we're going and free, uh, increase that up from three to five times. Yes. Grand Bahama, uh, well, Freeport, uh, um for Lauderdale, we're going to increase that from three to five as well. So um, we're looking forward uh, to the summer, and if you're planning your vacation for the summer holidays, now is a good time to go online, visit www.bahamasair.com, and start booking early because the earlier you book, the more you save. And for those uh, family groups and church groups and school groups, civics organizations, feel free to give us a call down there at Bahamas Air, and we'll be more than happy to assist you getting your families and friends over to enjoy a good vacation because as you all know the country knows people have been in in a state for a, a long time and everybody's just ready to get out yeah. and which better way to get out is by taking your next trip uh, on Bahamas Air. No and I spoke to a lady who we are working with now who's bringing a group to Freeport, Thai. Yes. Um, and uh, they're looking forward to a uh, a cultural evening. A very good evening that is going to take place down there at Pirates Cove. Um, we, for those who don't know, uh, we're, uh, Bahamas Air has partnered with a group out of New York, uh, uh, a spring break group who's coming to Grand Bahama to, to enjoy their vacation there for spring break March 31st to April 4th. And one of the events that they're going to be having, it's an event that uh, everybody can come out and enjoy. Open to the public. Open to the public. And it's going to be held at Pirates Cove. And um, for those persons here in Nassau wanting to go over to um, Grand Bahama, feel free to give me a call at 702-0034. And we'll be more than happy to assist you with that. We have partnered with uh, Tino Beach, where they can give you good accommodations for that particular weekend. And come and enjoy yourself. We'll talk about the band, who's, who they're bringing, and the group uh, next time you come on the show. Definitely. Give us a promotion. Right. Closing comments. Khadija. Um, don't forget... If you have any questions and queries, email flyer at bahamasair.com. Slow, slow down. Come off that bus. It was the, the email. <laughs> flyer, F-L-Y-E-R, at bahamasair.com. And for our platinum, platinum um, customers, because we do have tier levels, silver, gold, and platinum, don't forget your free bag. Amen. Being a platinum member. Closing comments, Will? Well, you know, uh, always a pleasure being here, David. And thank you for inviting us and keeping us coming. And for those... Of you, uh, when you want safe, reliable trans air transportation to and from uh, the Florida Gateway Center throughout the entire Bahamas, all the major family of islands, feel free to call us at Bahamas Air. Uh, we'll be more than happy to assist you and get you to your next uh, destination. Visit us, www.com, uh, bahamasair.com. Um, on, um, if you're in Grand Bahama or in Nassau, you can also visit our CTO offices in Grand Bahama. Uh, on the old airport roll and in Nassau at Palmdale office. See, we don't just fly here. We live here. Yeah. To those persons who would have been tuning in for the Ragged Island show, um, I have a lot of names, educators, pilots, politicians, administrators, commissioners. We're going to be calling them all for the rest of this week because Ragged Island has published a lot of persons who they are proud of, their sons and daughters. This show today is brought to you by Bahamas Air, also brought to you today by... Um, my two other sponsors as I wrap up the show. Um, that's to Sankey Products and it's Cancer Treatment Center of America. Join us tomorrow. We'll be right here. The story of a ragged island boy, Mark Wilson. Thanks to my producers, Master Control, um, Sean the Dapper in studio, um, Portia Fernanda, Cindy Smith. Uh, and thanks to those persons in tuning in all around the world. Ragged Island had everybody on today. You've been tuning into Direct Talk. I'm your host, David G. necessarily the views expressed by the ZNS Radio Network and by extension, the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas.
watching the ZNS Network, the People's Station. Coming up on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan investigates clownfish. Then he searches for a shark feeding frenzy. But first, Jonathan is on a mission to learn the secrets of starfish. And you might be surprised at these predators. All of this today on Jonathan Bird's Blue World. The Ministry of Health wishes to advise members of the public that prevention is key during this flu season. Practicing good cough hygiene can make the difference between you and your loved ones getting the flu or spreading the influenza virus. Good cough hygiene habits include covering your mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing and proper disposal of the tissue in a trash bin. Coughing or sneezing into your upper sleeve near your inner elbow and not your hands when a tissue is not available. Avoiding the use of handkerchiefs and towels as they hold germs, becoming a nest for the virus. And frequently washing your hands with soap and water, which is listed as one of the most important steps you can take to avoid getting sick and passing the virus on to others. If you have any questions about how to practice good cough hygiene to avoid catching or spreading the flu, contact your nearest community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. There's a spark of greatness in each of us. That spark is called personality. Individual gifts and talents provide the fuel to set that spark ablaze. Each child has the right to an education which values their personality and nurtures their talents, while teaching them to be respectful to their parents and their cultures. Meet Jonathan Bird, one of the world's top underwater nature cinematographers. Traveling the world on assignment for all the major networks, he is an Emmy Award winning authority on the underwater world. In freshwater or salt, reefs, wrecks or caves, Jonathan documents the world beneath the waves. Welcome to the Blue World. You might not think of sea stars as being very intelligent, and you'd be right. But you might be impressed by some of the amazing things they can do, especially considering they don't have a brain. Starfish, more correctly called sea stars, live just about everywhere in the ocean, from the tropics to Antarctica.